Yes. An announcement. Potential clickbait right there. It's not clickbait, don't worry. So what's the announcement? Is that what you're asking? Well, I guess you're just gonna have to watch the whole video to find, I'm just kidding. I, I will tell you right now. <laughs> I am gonna be a father in July. I can't really, I can't make it exciting. I'm just, I'm just a dude in my shop, so. Yay, yeah. So in honor of Chelsea being pregnant, I'm going to make her favorite fish, which is a bluegill, but it's pregnant too. Adorable, right? I thought so. She's, she's gonna like that. It'll be her lure. Oh, and uh, bonus announcement. I'm gonna be uploading videos much more frequently. Gotta make that money. I'm gonna be a dad. So let's get this thing cut out. This bait is gonna be some kind of lipless crankbait with a joint way back here. So the tail has a little bit of a flappy action to it. The back and the head up in the front are gonna be flattened off. It's gonna catch the water. The belly's gonna be pregnant, so really big. It's gonna give it the uh, lipless crankbait shimmy with a joint. That's the plan. Trying to keep it nice and simple so this bait definitely runs good and works good. Need to get a different blade on this bandsaw. Okay, let's do some fun facts about pregnancy. Just kidding, let's do some fun facts about bluegills. Bluegills, everybody's, well, most people's first fish is a bluegill. That's not a fact on here. That's, as a Midwesterner, probably a, uh, a bold assumption on my part. But that was my first fish, bluegill. They're called bream, brim, sunny, Copper nose. A lot of people call them a lot of different things. I've always called them bluegill. I don't know about you. They're a member of the sunfish family. The name sunfish, that encapsulates a lot of different other fish that have other names. You know, like shell crackers or pumpkin seeds or long-eared sunfish or bluegills. A lot of different kinds of fish like that. Bluegills love underwater structure. That's where they want to be, on the banks tree stumps, big rocks, little nooks and crannies where they can just chill is where they are. So they can grow up to 12 inches. I don't know what the world record is, but 12 inches would be a very big bluegill. That would equal about four and a half pounds. And that is a large bluegill, four and a half pound bluegill. Bluegills, they're omnivorous. They eat meat, they'll eat plants, they'll eat garbage. Whatever they can fit in their mouth, they eat. You could just put a blade of grass on a hook cast it out, dance it around, and it's not unlikely that a bluegill would bite that. They serve as the bait fish for a lot of different species, freshwater species. Back in the day, when I did more cat fishing, that was the go-to bait, cut bluegill. Minnows are probably better, just because they're smaller, you get more bites with them. But after minnows, it was cut gill. And if you wanted to go for a big flathead, you just throw a whole bluegill on a hook. Oh, it says right here, the largest bluegill ever recorded to be caught was 16 inches and it was four pounds and 12 ounces, which is a pretty large size bass. Four pounds and 12 ounces, wow. I wonder what that looked like, must have been pregnant. So bluegills are sunfish. They're just their own species. It's not like the other species in the sunfish family are like mutations or watered down versions of a bluegill. They're their own thing. There can be hybrids of like a pumpkin seed and a bluegill and uh, like a green sunfish and a shell cracker or something. I'm sure there can be hybrids like that because this is all the same genus, but each of these species are species, not hybridizations. I'm sure you all already knew that. It's just little things I get caught up on. Okay, so naturally bluegills, they live east of the Rocky Mountains, but today they're everywhere in North America. They've been introduced in Europe, as in South Africa, Zimbabwe, parts of Asia. So they've made their way around the world. Some places they're considered uh, infestation, a pest species. It says they're prohibited in Germany and Japan. 
might be competing with the koi. Yeah, it says they've, they are definitely an invasive species in Japan and wreak havoc with the native species. So apparently a bluegill, it's really good at swimming backwards. It utilizes its pectoral fins. The flow of the, uh, the spines on their pectoral fins are finely tuned to where they're super efficient at swimming backwards. They like living in tight quarters and jamming themselves up into nice safe nooks and crannies. And so uh, apparently it's been studied that their the utilization of their like pelvic and pectoral fins have been finely tuned. The facts get a lot less fun after that one. Just standard par for the course you would already know. Bluegills. Fun facts are over. Still a lot of material to remove around this fin on the bottom here. Okay, that is how it needs to be now. The next step is to cut the bait out from this profile. I wanna leave a lot of space in the middle here where I don't cut any tapers because I want the belly to be this wide. And then towards the top of the bait, that's where it's gonna get thin, but the belly's gonna stay wide. And then I just take a measurement that seems good. Yeah, I want it to be even on both sides, so then you just lock the calipers, make that mark, make that mark and that's how wide the nose of the bait will be and you just draw a line from there to there and that's where you cut I'd say that one's got some eggs in it. Time to round off these edges. So in order to get it a lot more thin on the top than it is on the bottom, I'm gonna stick with these two corners on the nose and I'm gonna draw a line coming straight back and it's gonna um, mesh with how thick the tail is back here. And that'll be the top edge of the chamfer lines for the top of this bait. If I can draw it. Things like this can get tricky to draw. Sometimes you just have to come off of where it should be and just remember that you did that and compensate when you're actually carving it out. But that part right there is what's gonna remain flat when even when this bait's completely done and that's gonna catch the water and give it the lipless crankbait action. For the belly of the bait, I'm gonna follow the contours that I cut out and move the, uh, pull the chamfer line in as I get closer to the tail. So I'm gonna start it out like this and then I'm pinching tighter and tighter with my finger as I get closer to the tail to where the chamfer line disappears. So long as they're even on both sides, you're good. And then the chamfer lines on the side, I want there to be more material removed on the top and so the chamfer line's lower. And then on the bottom, I wanna leave it big. So yeah, you get it. That's how it needs to be. So, next thing to do is draw out where these gills go and carve them out.
I've carved with a lot of different things. And it might sound weird, but I don't know. You just can't beat a utility knife. You can cut yourself really easy with one. It also cuts the wood really well. And you can always have a fresh blade. Just buy a box of a hundred of them. Put a new fresh blade in it for every lure, or switch, flip it around for every lure you do. It'll always be sharp. And it's a super thin blade. You can put it anywhere. And get it anywhere and cut whatever you need. I don't know, that's my endorsement for using a utility knife while carving lures. I'm sure there's something better out there. I think the last thing I'm gonna do for this bait today is uh, drill out the lead hole in the belly. It's gonna be a 5 8 inch hole and it's gonna go that deep. Why is it stopping? It's slipping a lot. I can't get any torque on the bit and it won't cut into the wood. And I don't know why. Oh, there it is. Oh, I lost the key. I think I have another. Ooh, just rounded that off. Got it done. So, we're gonna leave the pregnant bluegill here for today. Yeah, that's right. We're ending the video here and the lure's not finished, but it's okay because be back with another upload in like two days, maybe one day. Upload every day, that'd be nuts. We'll see, I'm going for two. Chip Chip, where did you get that shirt? You're looking good. Oh, you got it in the description? Good boy. Looking good.